What's cracking big dose? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. This is BDGE Fantasy Football. My name is Nicholas, and we are bike with another must own episode. Yesterday, we kicked off things with our running backs, rounds one through three. Again, this is going to be episodical. So, we're going to go rounds one through three. One, two, three, another video, four, five, six, third, and final video, seven, eight, nine. My hair is absolutely out of control today. The curls are just electric right now. Hey, there we go. Looks good enough. If you missed yesterday's must own running backs video, rounds one through three, make sure you stop what you're doing right now. You scroll down to the description, click on the link that says must own running backs rounds one, two, three, watch it. And then come back to this video. Also, while you're down there, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Hit that button that says subscribe if you are new to the channel. Must own wide receivers 2020 fantasy football. I'm ready. Y'all sound ready. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. And let's eat. you've been following me along this summer, then you already know my strategy for the first couple of rounds. All you have to do is listen to yesterday's video and you already know what I'm doing here. And if this is the first time stumbling across my channel, then I will reiterate. I'm not looking to draft wide receivers early this year. The first and second rounds are reserved for running backs. And I explain in more depth in yesterday's video why that is in particular this year. But, but listen, I know some of you guys are going to fade me. If you're going to fade my strategy, at least take the right players. And that's where I'm here to help y'all out today. There are a couple guys in the firsts and the seconds and the thirds rounds in which if you do go with a wide receiver, you need to make sure you're targeting the right guys. And right now, there are only a couple wide receivers going off the board in the first round. Michael Thomas, it is Devontae Adams. If you want to get Michael Thomas, most leagues are going to hear the name Michael Thomas, and he's going to be an early pick regular leagues you're going to see michael thomas rip off the board within those first three four or five picks i'm here to tell you not to do that i'm here to tell you not to draft michael thomas if you have a top five pick if you are in the back half of the first round and you're going to draft a wide receiver the must own wide receiver to leave the first round with is Devonte adams of the green bay packers Devonte adams is the biggest threat and he's a credible threat this is no fake threat this is no fake fucking all the kids get out of their elementary schools. We got a fake bomb call from fucking sixth grade Billy over here. Devontae Adams, legitimate threat to the throne of the wide receiver one. If we look like it last year, what's the story of Devontae Adams this season? Start off very slow. If you drafted Devontae Adams, you're, you're fucking sick of this guy. You want no part of him. But I'm telling you, just like Kamara with last video, Devontae Adams is basically the Kamara of the wide receiver position. He started off really slow, right? Those first three games were terrible. That whole offense looked clunky as shit. They were not moving the ball well. They looked out of sync. The chemistry was weird. And I'm going to credit that to Matt LaFleur being a new coach there and running his offense with these players for the first time. Offensive and offensive schemes overall just take a little while to mesh. He finally broke out in that fourth game. And then he got hurt. And over that time span, that's when we started to see Aaron Rodgers get more comfortable with the offense. So by the time Devontae Adams was back from his injury, it was everything clicking. We remember Devontae Adams in 2018. 111 catches, 169 targets, almost 1,400 yards, and 13 touchdowns in just 15 games. In 2019, last year, he missed four games with that turf toe. If you pace out his numbers from 2019 to a full 16 games, 169 targets, 111 receptions, exactly where he was the previous year. Yes, it was an extra game added onto it, but give me those numbers all day and tomorrow and the next day. And guess what? The fucking day after that. And he got back from his injury. Let's take a look. Weeks 10 through the conference championship. That is a nine game sample size. Nine. 11.3 targets a game. 7.6 receptions a game. 97.3 yards per game. Seven touchdowns in nine games. That is 18.2 half PPR points per game. Michael Thomas averaged 18.8 half PPR points per game last year. The most beautiful part about this is we already know that the chemistry between Rodgers and Adams is ridiculous, especially when we're getting down by the end zone. That's why his touchdown numbers were double digits for years on end there, right? Last year, we're going to throw that on the back burner. Second year in the offensive scheme, we love that. They didn't add anybody to this passing game. Not a single person that's going to threaten his target 
totals. They bring in Devin Funches. Guess what? Funches the fuck out of there. Funches opted out of the season. If for whatever reason, Funches was the reason holding you back from Devontae Adams, one, you're an idiot. Two, you don't have to worry anymore. Devontae Adams is in line for a monster, monster, monster target total. And we simply have to look back to the pace of last year and it tells you what his numbers actually were. Down the stretch, his target totals were insane. That is what I expect to see this year. If you are drafting a wide receiver in the end of the first round, it is Devontae Adams. Now, the second round of wide receivers, this is where I'll almost for certain tell you that you need to be drafting one of the running backs. Again, wide receivers just do not move the needle. Unless you're getting a one-of-a-kind season like Michael Thomas last year, like Devontae Adams is going to do in 2020, they're not going to push the needle. I'm going to read off a statistic that I stole from Rich Rebar, who said it on Matt Kelly's Roto Underworld podcast. Again, Rich Rebar, I will link his Twitter. You should go follow him. He said this a few weeks ago. Over the past 10 seasons, the RB2 fantasy group on average has only produced 69.4% of the scoring output generated by the RB1 group. In each of the past four seasons, that group on average has only done 63.3% of what the RB1s did. RB1s are gaining a larger edge. And when you compare that to the wide receiver two position, which has on average produced 76.5% of the wide receiver one output over the same time span, there is a clear edge in having an RB1 over the field versus a wide receiver one. And that trend continues as you go from RB3 to RB2 and wide receiver three to wide receiver two. Again, 69.4% of the RB1 scoring comes from RB2s, but 76.5% of the scoring from wide receiver twos subjugate wide receiver ones. Basically what that means is the drop off from wide receiver ones to wide receiver twos is much smaller than it is from RB1s to RB2. So you want to grab these top 10 high upside elite running backs because the high upside elite wide receivers don't move the needle for you. That being said, if there is one player I'll be targeting in the second round that you'll pretty much be able to get anywhere, of course you can go with Tyreeks, you can go with Julio's, they're safe picks, but you usually need to use a very early round second round pick on them and they're probably not going to be available at the 207 208 209 is not deandre hopkins it is chris Tefer godwin now some people might say hey last year was the year to have him i don't think that's the case i actually love the move with tom brady coming in i've said this piece before and i will continue to echo it because this is the way i feel about chris godwin when we look back at last summer man bruce arians came in he wanted to set up his system around chris godwin he set up his system and it runs through christopher godwin he said last year that he's going to play the larry fitzgerald role He's never going to come off the field, and he's going to catch 100 passes. And when you look back at those three check marks, Chris Godwin hit all three of them. He played the same exact percentage of slot snaps as Larry Fitzgerald did under Bruce Arians. So he took that role, the one in which Arizona's offense ran through, the passing offense at least. He never came off the field. In the games in which he was healthy, he played on 95% of the snaps. So he played Larry Fitzgerald's slot role, which Arian said. He never came off the field, which Arian said. And then he said he's going to catch 100 passes. He only played in 14 games. Actually, 13 and a half because he was injured halfway through one of them. If you pace out his 13 and a half catch total to 16 games, he's over 100 catches. Okay? So he said exactly what was going to happen with Chris Godwin. He came in knowing how to use Chris Godwin, how he wanted to use Chris Godwin, and then use him to perfection, which is why Chris Godwin is going to continue being a massive, massive, massive part of this offense because Bruce Arians says so. Sorry for saying massive like that. I, I started <laughs> I started talking to this British girl and her accent drives me. You know, accents are crazy, man. I feel like Americans probably sound so dumb to other people. Like my like New York, New Jersey accent, which I don't think is really that strong. Maybe you guys notice it. But when I go other places, I feel like I sound dumb. And when I when I hear this girl talk in her British accent, it's like an auto, it's an auto, you know, you know, everyone has those things where like if someone they're, you know, not significant other, but you're looking for this in a partner that have these one or two things. It's like an auto. If you're rating them one out of 10, it's an auto like plus two points. British accent, Australian accent. I think this is probably universal, like an objective thing. If you got one of those, you're automatically moved up like 2.3 points on the scale. And the things she says, like they, they make no sense. Like I'm, I'm just taking the piss like that's a way of saying i'm just fucking with you and they really really are like straight out of fucking austin powers like they say shag instead of like oh we're gonna have a shag I'm like bet never thought a word can make me so horny anyways sorry I don't, I don't know why i went off on that tangent chris godwin i think is is as safe as a pick in the second round the late second round you could probably get him in the early third round in some drafts it's just about anybody there chris godwin don't 
shy away because Tom Brady's coming in. You don't know what this offense is going to be. It's not as pass heavy. The passing game is going to run through Chris Godwin because if you think that Tom Brady's arm is not there anymore, perfect for Chris Godwin. He's a pumped up slot receiver with ridiculous athleticism compared to the pumped up slot receivers that Tom Brady has turned into almost Hall of Famers at this point. Julian Allen, Wes Welker, all those guys. Chris Godwin's going to play that role and it's going to be beautiful. He's one of the best in the league in terms of yards after catch. That's why we don't need Brady to throw the ball downfield. Chris Godwin led the entire league in catches of 20 plus yards last year, not because he's a deep threat, because he's so good with the ball in his hands. So we have Arians designing the passing offense through him. We have Tom Brady, who likes to throw to receivers like Chris Godwin, and we have a beautiful, beautiful recipe of a cocktail for Chris Godwin. So draft Chris Godwin in your leagues this year if you are going to take a receiver in the second round. Hopefully, y'all are still doing your drafts in person. You know, if you got your season-long leagues and you do it with your boys, you do them with your coworkers, you do it with whoever, that's probably the best night of the fantasy year, right? Like the draft night is so much fun. That's what makes fantasy so much fun. That night in particular is awesome. If you do live drafts, I've got something cool for you. We're going to do a giveaway, but I want to introduce you to a brand. So we're going to do a little bit of an unboxing. Now, this brand reached out to me. Draft Now. DraftNowFantasy.com. They sent me over a few things, and I want to open this box and see what we're working with here. And I've, I've seen most of their products already because I wanted them to send me them over so I could test them out and make sure I'm not selling y'all anything that I don't believe in. They sell live draft boards for your fantasy leagues. They also sell these beautiful trophies, which I shouldn't have revealed already. And they sell an entire draft kit, which is like everything you need for your actual fantasy drafts. So we're going to unbox this real quick, and I'm going to tell you about the giveaway at the end, and I'm going to tell you about some promotions we got going on with them. They have a draft kit that encompasses everything you need, as I said. Comes with one of the trophies, okay? This thing is beautiful. You could hit snacks over the head with it and probably kill them with it. That's how sturdy it is. Comes extra double, triple wrapped, and this is one of the underrated parts of packaging like this. You get to fucking pop these things. So we've got the trophy, Fantasy Football Champion. If you're winning your league, listen, the, fuck, fuck the money, to be honest with you. Like, who cares about the money? Money comes and goes. Trophies, legacies, championships are forever. They've got a little, uh, I forget the word for this, satchel maybe? Obviously, you're going to want the loser at your league to wear something along the lines of, I fucking stink at fantasy football. I'm going to see if they can get a custom one that says I fucking stink. Throw that around, make them wear it for the draft. That's what I love about draft kits, man. You can get as creative as you want. They've got a really, really good one here at draft now. And of course, they've got the draft board. Now, this thing's a beast. All right. I'm going to open it up for you guys real quick. So it's like beautifully done in matte black. The material makes me want to rub it all day long. It's got up to 14 teams on this. It goes down to, I can't even see, 19, 20, 20 rounds. So for all y'all with the IR COVID spots, you're extending your draft for an extra three to four rounds. This is a perfect fit. You could put the league name right there in Sharpie, put the date so you never forget it. And they've got stickers that you could write the team names on. And of course, they've got all the actual stickers for the players and stuff that come with it. So it's a beautiful, beautiful package, to be honest with you it comes with like everything you need for your fantasy league so you've got the trophy you've got the draft board you've got the stickers for the players you've got the satchel and we are going to be giving away five draft boards from draft now so draft now was nice enough to give y'all a promo code as well as free shipping so the website is draftnowfantasy.com which i will link in the description below get everyone in your league literally to chip in like four dollars and you'll be able to get the draft kit, okay? That's all it takes. Like $4 per 10 or 12 people, and you've got the draft kit. DraftNowFantasy.com. If you use the promo code BDGE, it's right there, BDGE, you're going to get 10% off your order plus free shipping. It's a fantastic deal. DraftNowFantasy.com. Promo code BDGE will get you 10% off plus free shipping. We've also got must-own wide receivers in the third round, so we must continue the video. The last and final wide receiver in this video, again, we're going to do rounds four through six for both wide receivers and running backs, and then seven through nine for both wide receivers and running bikes. It's August, baby. It is content season. It is clickbait season, and I'm here for it. So round three's must-own wide receiver for 2020 fantasy football, and I'd imagine he's going to be the wide receiver one on a lot of my teams. It is Mr. Robinson. Hello to you, Mrs. Robinson. Allen had the third most targets in the NFL last year. Allen Robinson had 154 targets last year. Only Julio and Michael Thomas had more targets. There's no question about Allen Robinson being back to an alpha wide receiver. He had a long stretch of 
being hurt, not looking good, bad quarterback play, et cetera, et cetera. But last year, now that he was two years removed from the ACL, he looked so damn good when you watched him play football. I forgot how good he was three or four years ago. And now he's back to that same speed and he's not that old. So he's got his alpha role. It's just a matter of when those alpha targets are going to be in his catch radius. I also want to say real quickly, if you want to just skip all my videos and get the complete list of must draft players every position not just running back wide receiver but quarterbacks and tight ends it is in the draft guide which is live right now that you can literally get for 10 bucks if you go to monkeyknifefight.com and you deposit ten dollars using the promo code bdge you will get the must own draft list you will get all of our rankings top 200 half ppr standard full ppr available on mobile tablet iphone fucking sam even the samsung galaxies can get some love out here shout out to the android users there's just so much in the actual draft guide itself so go check that out bigdogdraftguide.com for more info on the draft guide but the cheapest and most valuable way to get it is through monkeyknifefight.com using the promo code bdge when you do that they're going to give you a five dollar free play ticket along with getting all the draft guides and shit for free. Allen Robinson does not play for free because he's a fucking beast. He tore his ACL in 2017, came back strong as ever 2019, and he was literally jumping off the screen. And he literally had to jump off the screen to catch some of Mitchell Trubisky's passes. The Bears signed Nick Foles, and obviously he's at a disadvantage given the summer, you know, between the quarterback competition between him and Trubisky, and if Foles can get on the field for the starting job in week one. It's going to be difficult to say. I had a lot more confidence in that happening back in April when I thought we were going to get a little bit of on-field action between the two. Is it an upgrade from Trubisky to Nick Foles? Is he even a good passer of the football? And to be honest with you, I don't really know what Nick Foles. He is almost impossible to really figure out how good this guy is at quarterback in the NFL. But will he also be the best quarterback that Robinson has ever received passes from in the NFL? Yes. In each of the past two seasons, I'm just going to rattle off a bunch of stats for you. In each of the past two seasons, Allen Robinson has ranked outside of the top 50 wide receivers in catchable target rate, target quality rating, and target accuracy. Those three things combine both raw targets, the depth of the targets that you're getting, and the quality of them. So between those three statistics on playerprofiler.com, everything thrown Robinson's way was absolute trash. Just 72% of his targets over the last two years have been deemed catchable. So if this guy's getting 150 targets he's getting 50 or 60 of them that are not catchable because of fucking Mitchell Trubisky in 2019 Trubisky ranked 25th among quarterbacks in PFF's passing grade 26th in adjusted completion percentage which takes into account throwaways and and spikes and shit like that 28th in adjusted deep completion percentage and dead last amongst quarterbacks in both adjusted completion percentage while under pressure and yards per attempt on play action I can't find a single statistic that was positive for Mitchell Trubisky from last year. Not only do I think the quarterback position is going to be a monster upgrade for Allen Robinson, but the fact that Allen Robinson was actually used in the slot last year at a very significant rate makes me very, very, very confident that he'll return really good numbers regardless of who the quarterback is there. Do you want to know why Michael Thomas catches a bazillion balls in the Saints offense? Because they utilize him in the slot and they know that the easiest mismatch in the NFL right now is putting your elite wide receivers in the slot against cornerbacks because defensive coordinators are really dumb and they're just like yes we can't move our cornerback ones into the slot we have to use a middle linebacker or safety or our slot nickel who is the fucking fifth cornerback on our team against Michael Thomas and against Allen Robinson so despite Allen Robinson's outside elite alpha frame he ran 41.1% of his routes from the slot last year. Among 38 wide receivers that ran at least 180 routes from the slot last year, Robinson's 24.3% target rate on slot snaps ranked fourth behind only D-Hop, Cooper Cup, Julian Edelman. So pretty damn good wide receivers, especially ones in the slot. Commanding targets is a skill, people, and Allen Robinson in the slot is about as skilled of a matchup as you could possibly get. So volume should be the least of our worries when we talk about A-Rob. All we need is a little bit more accuracy from the quarterback position in Chicago, and Allen Robinson is going to go the fuck off. 154 targets. He caught 98 passes last year. There's a very good chance that we see Robinson flirt with 105 catches, 14 to 1,500 yards, and a lucky break could get him into that 7 to 10 touchdown zone. And you're looking at a, a third round, easy wide receiver one smash on 
Allen Robinson. Okay, he is the must own wide receiver in round three. Again, if you want all of the must own receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, tight ends, the best thing we put out all summer is the draft guide. It takes all of the videos, it takes all of the best information that we find, all the biggest spikes, throws them into one beautifully organized package for you. Available on BigDogDraftGuide.com if you're not eligible for the Monkey Knife Fight promo. They are sponsoring the draft guide. This is why the deal is coming as such a Good value to you. You deposit $10 on Monkey Knife Fight using the promo code BDGE. One, you get to play with the $10. As soon as the NFL kicks off, I'm going to be throwing out my favorite Monkey Knife Fight picks of the week, if not daily, because they got other sports on there too, if you're into basketball, baseball, whatever, but we're going to make a lot of money. They give you $5 of free money to play with on there when you use our promo code. So you're getting to play with all that shit, and that gets you the draft guides for free. The season-long draft kit, which has all of our exclusive shit in there, our rankings and all the stuff I said before, the Dynasty Rookie Kit, and Dr. Morse's full injury guide. So it's the best value out there in fantasy football, y'all. If, if you want to support the brand, that's the best way of doing it on Monkey Night Fight. Make sure y'all check out DraftNowFantasy.com for all y'all's league's needs. We have our E-Town Get Down League meeting. I'm filming this on Monday, so we have it tonight, which will be this week's Fade the Public episode. So if you guys are wondering what to do with your leagues, make sure you stay tuned for Friday's episode of Fade the Public because we're getting together. It's like our 12-year league that we're in and we have a, a lot of issues to work through, obviously, with this COVID-infested NFL season. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, man. If you did, as always, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thursday's video will be a mock draft. I love y'all. I'm out. Until tomorrow.